perfectly straightforward. It just flips a vertical range of cells to a horizontal range or vice versa. In other words, it turns rows into columns or co columns into rows. And from a syntax perspective, they very simple, just one single argument. And that's the array of cells that you want to transpose. So to see what this looks like visually, consider this product and uh, category level data in co column A through C. We can use a transpose function uh, and re reference that array of values from A1 through C9, and it's going to produce something that looks like this. And it looks something like this. Uh, here I have, okay, sorry, this is frequency. Okay, this is transpose. Okay. So you can see I have used a transpose function and I have uh, said that A1 to C9, it completely flips a vertical range of cells to a horizontal range. Here you can see it has completely flipped into those things. So this is the pro product column. This is the A column. This is the B column. And this is the C column. We are basically flipping that original array by transforming each column into a row and each row into a column. And a nice little pro tip here. Transpose is a great way to create pivot table style views where you can break down different values by both row labels and co column labels to slice and dice your data for exploratory analysis. Okay, And that's exactly what I'm about to show you in this Excel demo. So let's jump into our uh, uh, array formulas workbook and practice applying this transpose function to some of the data. All right, here we are in the uh, workbook. We have moved on the transpose tab, got the exact same raw data that we are getting used to working with at this point. So the, we have got the in industries, job title, the cities, the salary, and, and the growth rate. So you can see I have got a drop down selected here with a unique list of industry here. And basically what I want to do is create a view where I can list out the unique job titles for the selected industry. Basically as row, row labels here in column G and list out each of the cities essentially as column labels here in row 5. So we will uh, list these things as uh, horizontal and once I have done that I would like to use an average ifs function to compare average salaries for every combination of job title and city and this is going to be a really helpful exploratory tool that users can use to start to tease out trends and patterns in this data set so let's go ahead and start and uh, we have here cell g6 so in cell G6, I'm going to do is try to produce the list of unique job titles based on the selected industry. And every time we kind of create one of these nested dynamic array formulas, I like to start basically from the inside out. So I, I know I need a filter function here because I'm trying to return a filtered list of job titles based upon the in industry chosen. So I'm almost working from the core of the function outward from there. So, so what I'll do, I'll write a filter function here, filter. So B3 to B842. And the include uh, argument is my filter criteria. So which job titles do I want to include? Well, the ones where my industry, which lives in column A, is equal to the industry selected in my H4, uh, H3. Yes, what I'll say, industry, shift to control, is equal to H3. And if I were to just close the parenthesis, so if I just, 
sorry. Okay. And if you were to just to close the parentheses and enter that, you would see I'm getting health related job titles, which looks good. So here uh, there is technology. What I'll say? Forgive health care. It is not there. You can see it has changed the to health related. So not quite done. I need to deep uh, wrap that all in a unique function. So what I'll say, we'll wrap entire thing in the unique mm. there you go and then last but not the least just from a user friendly standpoint let's also sort these and i don't need any extra parameters because uh, alphabetical would be great so there we go So let me put a sort function here. It has been sorted according to the this thing. So that's step one here where transpose comes into play. I would like to break down the salaries for each of these job titles by CT and the clearest way that can do that is add basically column headers for each city here in row five here so just like i created a unique sorted list of job titles i also i know i also want unique sorted list of cities and in this case i don't actually need to filter because i want all of the possible cities here in my column headers so i don't need any filter all i need is sorted unique so let's start there first again inside out starting with a unique function Yes, it is a half. So I will sort it now. So I'm going to take that sort and unique formula that, that I just wrote. Wrap that all in a transpose. I'll wrap this entire formula into transpose. Like this, you can make a horizontal. And that should do the trick. So we have uh, same set of cities transposed into one row. And let's go ahead just for styling. Let's make these look like headers. Maybe give them a little bit of sh shaded fill. So I'll say. So you can make it dark blue. So, and we have just built a structure of the template for our 
pivot style view the last step is to populate the values themselves write the average salaries based on the both the title and the city so starting here in uh, cell h6 we are going to use an average and uh, its function so what i'll say give average And the values that I want to average, the average range, those are the salaries here in uh, D3. So those are the salaries here in D3 through D842. And now there are two different criteria that we need to meet. So criteria range, uh, one will be my job titles. That's the first letter that, that I want to apply. And so the criteria one is going to be all my job titles. In column B, And comma over to the criteria one which is where my list of filtered job title lives so So, uh, so what I'm going to say is So this entire <coughs> so at this point we have told Excel we want the average salaries from column D where the jo job titles in column B match up with the job titles in that spilled range that I created in the G column. And then by that same logic, I'm going to work on my second criteria. So this time it's the city-based criteria. So I'm going to point out all my cities. So let's say comma. Then over to the criteria range. This thing. The H3. That's going to be another spilled range. So we want this one. But this time it's my horizontal range.
the beauty of the random array function is that if I type uh, h by x in knows that or it gives me that skill range reference without me having to edit anything. So you can see, and that should do the trick. So if I go ahead and close that off. Press enter. I've entered so many arguments. So I have average, then ifs. We have gone wrong. So it is average ifs, not average ifs, it is average ifs. You can see we have got the, so check that out. We have got a whole list of average salaries broken down by job titles and by cities. So really, really powerful step and because we use those split range references carefully that means that as we select larger ranges of uh, data like te technology or formula applies down, down to the entire spilled range so it looks like we are working out just great it's dynamic it's filterable it's powerful i think the last thing that i might do here maybe to draw attention to let's say the top five overall salaries in this range so this is a great excuse to use a conditional formatting rule and know this. This is exactly the largest set of jobs available down to row 70. So I'm selecting the entire possible scope of values that I want to format. So I'm going to head to home, conditional formatting. And let's use top and bottom rules here. And then we'll say top 10. And uh, and uh, why, why, why don't we say let's format the top five items with the green fill and green text. So I'll say I don't want top 10, I just need top 5 with green fill with dark green text. So press OK. There we go. The top 5 average salaries has been highlighted with the help of this thing. So this is about transpose. So now we'll say hold on the joining arrays with joining arrays with uh, joining uh, arrays with choose. So in fact, something I actually just learned recently that is choose. Now the choose function which we have talked about before can actually be used to combine separate uh, cell ranges or spill ranges into one single array. And that means it can be referenced or ma manipulated as a single unit within other formulas so here is a common use case when this can really come in handy so suppose you have got raw data it's at the product level and you have got product names category sales and margin values and maybe you do something like this using a unique function to, to uh, come up with a unique list of categories and then based on those five ca categories you calculate the average sales by ca category using the like average if for average if so now that's the it's an approach that we have used a number of times already in previous demos
But the catch is that Excel treats these two spill ranges in columns F and G as two distinct arrays. And that limits how we can manage and manipulate the data in those two columns. So this is where choose comes in. So it's a little tip. You can use the choose function. And in that first argument, the index argument, you can use an array constant like 1, 2, comma, and then point to each individual spill range that you want to combine into one array. Here we have two spill ranges or arrays that we want to combine, like F2 ash and uh, G2 ash. So you, we use an array constant of 1, comma to reference each of those two arrays or spill ranges in turn. And then that function essentially spits out a single array that consolidates all of the data together. So the, that's the basic primer on how choose is used in this context to really drive it home. Let's shift gears. Let's jump back into our Excel workbook. And I'm going to show you when and why this can be really, really powerful. So all right. So go ahead and op open up our dynamic array of formulas workbook. And, in, and here we have got the same raw data and that we are working with. Nothing new there. We have got some placeholders. We have average salary by industry, industry average salary. And basically, we want to start by calculating the average salary at the industry level. So we are going to start by just producing the unique list of industries using a unique function. So nothing special here. We don't even need to sort it, not wor worried about that. So unique of industries. Then the average salary. So I have taken a unique values of industries. Next, I want to calculate the average salary for each of these industries. So we'll use an average IPS. I'll say. So well, those are my salaries from D3 through D842. So my cr criteria range, my full list of industries and column A and the cr criteria itself. So I'll see comma, the criteria range one would be my industry. Then this spill it range will give over just what we have created that will give. So close it off. Let's enter. So you can see it has calculated the average salary for each industry. For the technology, the average salary is this. For sales, this is the average salary. So let's see if we can give that a shot here in column J. We'll say sorted array. But suppose we want to sort this data that we just created in column G and H descending by that calculated average salary field. Let's see if we can give, uh, we can do that. So what I'll say. I'll say sort. Okay. 
G3. So I have a salary and we want it descending. Let's say sort. Sort indexes H that is one, two, sort indexes two, comma. I, I need in minus descending, so I'm giving minus one. So you can see it has come, it has arranged in the descending order. So we have got our unique in, in industries there sorted, descending by that average salary that we define with an average function. But there is one problem with the, what we just did, and I'm wondering if you, you know, like uh, thinking, no, note that in our search formula, when we, in our sort formula, when we inputted that first argument, the uh, array uh, argument, we don't see a spill range reference here. So you can see here. So you can see here, I selected the, sorry, not here. So I selected the entire array, but there is no any spill reference. There is no ash. But we used to get before when we selected. So in fact, if I delete these arguments in start over, so instead of, giving like this if i say i'll delete this instead of selecting whole array i'll select uh, each and every column at the same time you can see i'm i'm getting an ash symbol but if i try to select both i'm i'm not get, getting that i get the fixed reference so I'm going to press escape here. So now if the data were static, if it were fi finalized, this may be OK. But the pro problem is if new industries get created or those spill ranges in column G and H grow, right? Let's say there are, at that time, this, will, this for formula will not change if uh, see if, if this array grows, then this formula will not change. Let's say there is a new industry called tech to press enter. So notice that. So if I enter a new industry here, Tech now See, expand it to accommodate that new industry. But our sorted array here in JNK is missing one of those in industries. And that's because our sort function was fixed to that specific cell reference. So let me undo that chain, get it, get it back to technology. What I'll do, I'll delete that. This is exactly the type of use case where this choose tip can be really helpful. So instead of the sort approach, I'm going to delete what I just did. So I'll, say I'll delete this. So instead, I'm going to use a choose function here. So what I'll write, I'll write a choose function. 
And remember for the index number argument, we are going to use an array. Close the curly braces. So choose a value or action to perform from a list of values based on an index number. So one comma two. I'm literally just going to input the two spill ranges or dynamic arrays that I want to join. So what I'll say, first is this one. I need just this one. Press enter. Sorry, this is should be curly braces. So you see that blue border so surrounding this as one single cohesive array. And of course, if you want the sorted norm, I could simply wrap that choose function in a sort. And of course, if you want the sorted norm, I could simply wrap that with the help of. So I'm going to sort the second column. So I'll say sort it in the by second column by descending order. So minus one. So you can see. There you go. So I have got my unique industry sorted descending by a calculated field that I created, and then joined together using that choose function. So, but you may be thinking to yourself, that's great, but we had to create this array in column G. So this uh, uh, other array in column H, read them like helper columns and then join them. So, well, this is a great excuse to nest these functions together. So you can accomplish this exact same output within one single formula, just like we did with those dynamic top-end calculations with a RAND array. 
So in this case, let's start with a formula in J3 and instead of referencing our spilled ranges, like G3 and H3, he, uh, we can go ahead and take those formulas and embed them into this one single choose function. So I'm actually going to start with my H3 function. So I'll copy the whole thing. jump back into j3 and replace the entire of that whole function so what i'll say okay in this choose so in the place of h3 we give this so we have made it more dynamic. Okay, something is wrong. Okay. So still looks good. So I know I want the G3 spill range function, which is my unique function. So this is how if this grows, if this uh, raw, raw data grows, even then this will be what? Uh, this will do the same thing here. So this, uh, so, so math function is there now that we have to do all this. Which section is that? I think in the lookup array only we left that one. <clears throat> Hi, Udita. Uh, you, uh, are you able to connect on any other time at any other time rather than ATM? Oh, okay, Ugita, thank you. Uh, so we'll 